I'm originally from Italy and I moved to UK to live with the men I loved. Our relationship and then marriage didn't work out and so I had to face divorce. At the same time I was also made redundant at work so I had to face a career change as well. In very short time I found myself without an income, without a family, social background uh, and on top of everything else I, I knew that I had uh, to do something to change my work because it wasn't satisfying anymore. To face divorce is already difficult with uh, some support in your own environment but I didn't have all that and I had to face it alone so it was a very testing journey indeed. After the legal process finished, after two years of hell, I had to face my healing journey, uh, so that was another challenge for me. In the middle of all this, I uh, came across the opportunity to join an expedition to go to Antarctica to face fears and limiting belief, and I decided to enroll. For me, the idea of traveling to such a faraway place and also to, to see a continent of such beauty, it was so resistible. Especially, I wanted to test myself and I wanted to, to find myself again because I felt lost. So I enrolled and um, when I, I went on the journey, um, I was tested indeed and uh, I tell my whole story and what happened down under in the freezer of the earth in my book Antarctic Odyssey, A New Beginning. The journey was a real initiation for me because life threw at me uh, the unexpected and so I had to face uh, another challenge during the journey. After uh, coming back from Antarctica, I also travelled on my own through Patagonia to see the Andes in Argentina and in Chile. And I even went to Easter Island. That for me represented a bit like the unreachable place, the dream place, because it's so far and remote. In a way, quite similar to Antarctica. When I came back to UK, I had another challenge. Um, I had to face another crisis. Um, if I had found part of myself that I've lost on the way while traveling, when I came back to my normal environment, which was in UK, I, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't find myself. So that was another challenge. Um, and so I started another soul searching process. In the middle of this process, I found out that actually one of the things I really wanted to do in my life it was to learn to fly and become a pilot. So what do you do when you find out <laughs> your passion or, or such a vibrant passion of yours that you have to, to go for it? And uh, so I did. I moved out of London where I used to live back then and uh, I searched for a place where I could learn to fly. Also, at the same time, I had to decide what was uh, um, that I, I wanted to learn to fly. And that was another challenge in itself. But by serendipitous um, um, situations, I had the opportunity to fly in a small plane, in an autogyro, in a glider, and even in helicopter. And that kind of helped me um, in my process of uh, becoming clear what I wanted to learn to fly. At the same time, I also became clear of my life call, which is empowering women and by uh, educating them to the feminine awareness, the feminine consciousness and how it operates in the female body. So uh, again, that was another challenge in itself because I had to find out how to, to put this into action. But again, when you uh, found out a patient of yours, you, you, you have to act upon it, you can't just leave it. It's a challenge and it's also a pleasure on the other side, but you still have to go through the fear process that always comes up. By choosing um, my dreams and saying no to a life that wasn't fulfilling me uh, anymore, I little by little I, um, I became and am becoming a flying inspiration. 
a real flying inspiration and also the woman that always wanted to be born as Gabriella Guglielmino de Trivia is come. Going through the divorce and facing the state of my relationship uh, and also of my marriage um, was necessary because I had to find myself again uh, in a way in the process I've lost part of my identity uh, considering that I left my country, I started a new life in London uh, with a person that I barely knew really. I met him while I was working in the Maldives and um, I didn't know him well. So I, I chose to do this uh, because I wanted it, but uh, <laughs> you know, in life you don't know uh, uh, what, what, what something is until you go through it and you experience it. So after experience it, I realized that my um, life wasn't satisfying and I couldn't really go any further because uh, this type of life was killing me. So I I had to make a, a decision and uh, face the unknown and so I did. Then after the divorce um, it was time to get to know myself because I partly lost myself in the process and for me traveling was uh, one way to do this. I. Um, I needed to feel my spirit soar again and uh, um, you know I had left a, I had lived a life that uh, it wasn't representing me and I was feeling like it wasn't satisfying so saying yes to my spirit and uh, go traveling it was for me a, a big uh, um, a big deed um, also, I uh, inside wanted to inside myself. I wanted to face my fears, and I wanted to move beyond that. That was very important to me um, because I had lived in a very long period of full of fears. So Antarctica served me quite well in this respect um, because it was a good test for me right then. Um, also. One thing that I, uh, I acquired in the journey was that, you know, when once you say yes to your spirit and you allow yourself to expand, uh, then you can't really um, shrink back to who you were. Um, so, uh, I tell more in depth uh, about my journey, my challenge in Antarctica in my book, Antarctic Odyssey, A New Beginning. Um, and so, from that, uh, I can understand why when I went back home in UK, I couldn't fit there. I couldn't fit. I, it, it just wasn't possible. Um, I had to follow my heart. So, in a way, I can understand why going through that crisis um, made me realize that I wanted to learn to fly because it was something that I always wanted to do. So it was actually listening to my heart again. Um, yeah, and, and say yes to becoming a pilot. Um, learning to fly in itself, um, it's an experience that it was a very good metaphor for life because you learn every, every time you're in the air and the experience never ends, really, it's like life. So, um, um, again, uh, it was saying yes to to go for life. Um, then also uh, thinking of the other thing that happened to me was discovering my life purpose. Um, again, that's another test on why um, it it entails the responsibility to act accordingly, um, accordingly to your, your your life purpose, your your what you want to do uh, on a daily basis. So it becomes impossible to um, go back to the old you. Um, you have to do something on a daily basis to move, to move forward and to go towards what you want to, to implement and what you want to, to bring uh, into your life and in the life of others. <sighs> you see, when you uh, face a life crisis like a divorce, um, the process really makes you become very aware of who you are and uh, at the same time you also become aware who are the right people 
uh, that you want to relate to. Um, and also the right people you can share your projects and thoughts with. Um, you become aware that you are vulnerable and uh, knowing that you can be wounded very easily it really helps you to uh, protect yourself and protecting yourself becomes paramount so especially <laughs> like in my case if you have crazy plans it's even more important uh, because if you disclose your plans to somebody who is not similar minded type of person it will destroy them and for you it will be even more difficult to regain uh, momentum and energy and hope and enthusiasm so you know fundamental is to surround yourself with people who are not detractors but they are people who really are good supporters um, and I have to say I the other thing I also learned is that not necessarily your nest of kings are the best people uh, to share your project with. Um, so all in all I would say a very important lesson. It would be audacious, uh, adventurous and inspiring. Um, also I think uh, the name Flying Inspiration suits me quite well. well during the divorce uh, process, um, I was determined to have justice um, and also I wanted to honour my values as a woman. Um, so I had no choice by going through the process itself, uh, so necessity was my motivation. So before my Antarctic uh, trip, uh, in the nine months that preceded uh, my departure for Antarctica, uh, what kept me motivated was the fact that uh, I wanted to be fit uh, because I didn't know what would happen in Antarctica uh, and so um, I had to uh, get ready. So I did everything uh, that I could possibly think to do to be able to be in top form uh, emotionally, psychologically and physically of course. Um, so the need to serve my body and uh, to be in top form that was kept me motivated in those nine months before leaving for Antarctica. When I went back to UK, um, I went through uh, my second crisis, basically uh, my crisis post trip, and um, then the need of understanding what was going on with me uh, and to remain sane uh, mentally, um, it was what get me motivated in going through the process to understand uh, what was happening. Um, so the need of self-discovery, remaining uh, sane uh, mentally and emotionally balanced really was what kept me going um, during my second crisis. Then uh, when I realized um, that I wanted to learn to fly, I had to find a way really to, to go for it. So to give you an example, I had to understand what I wanted to learn to fly, where and how and the course etc. So uh, um, that kept me going because I had to, 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 to give an answer to all these questions. Um, also having discovered this passion of mine uh, was the, the key factor that kept me uh, on the ball every day so that uh, I could make this uh, dream of mine possible and make it happen. Um, so the big um, force behind it all, it was actually my passion, uh, following my passion of uh, knowing that I could and I wanted to learn to fly. So as far as uh, my work, uh, my life call of empowering women through educating them to the kind of feminine consciousness and how it uh, expresses itself in the female body, um, I have to say that uh, what keeps me motivated is the fact that I need to find my inner motivation first on a daily basis and also this means that I have to find a way to get out there and reach women which is not really easy uh, considering that uh, educating women uh, uh, about the menstrual cycle 
it's uh, quite difficult because it's a t taboo subject. Um, but this work needs to be done and uh, this work chose me. So in a way, the way it feels for me is almost like I have no choice but finding a way to reach women and, and, and help them out. So what is me motivated? Uh, well, my spirit. Uh, definitely my spirit and um, when I feel low uh, that's what, what I, I go back to um, asking for help uh, to my spirit, inner spiritual guide uh, you know. good question well my advice to others is the following follow your heart um, listen to what heart says to you your heart knows and I would add uh, the closing line of my book Antarctic Odyssey a new beginning which is life is a journey of the heart the mind is only a helper the soul is the adventure so to sum it all up I would say my fearless story is a story full of fear but I go through it and I come out of the other side. So my fear becomes my dear, my dear friend. And I become fearless and I live fearlessly. You can do it too.